Janmadasya Jata, who has created everything and who is maintaining everything. And he is, he is the cause of everything, he is the cause of all causes. And he is, because he is the cause of all causes, he is completely independent. You see, because cause is effect, cause is behind effect. When there is something, we have to say that there is a cause. All of a sudden, the phone starts to ring. That's the effect. But what is the cause of ringing? Somebody is phoning. Uh, so, somebody is the cause. Now, who is the cause of somebody? <laughs> who, is the, who is the cause of somebody? His parents? Yes, his parents. <laughs> right. Who is the cause of his parents? So this is how, when you go to the ultimate cause, and that is Krishna. And Krishna, there, beyond Krishna there is no cause. Krishna is the cause of all causes, but Krishna doesn't have any cause. That's why he is the Supreme Personality of God. That's the difference between us and Krishna. So. <clears throat> Can anybody say that he is completely independent? Can you say that you are independent? You are dependent upon so many things. So, everyone is dependent. All the way up to Brahma, everyone is dependent. But beyond Brahma is Vishnu. So, so the, the, therefore, like Supreme Personality of Godhead is the cause of all causes, therefore he is completely independent. Now, how do we get to know about him? That's the question that I asked him. Did Brahma know Krishna? At the beginning, did Brahma find out from his feeling? <laughs> Brahma even tried to climb down the lotus that he came from. And can you imagine Brahma's ability? But still Brahma couldn't understand Krishna. How did Brahma get to understand Krishna? Jagannath. He, uh, he turned inward. He yeah, good. And then, just by doing that, just by meditating, can one get to know Krishna? Hmm? He okay, he prayed, but did he know who to pray to? So did he pray or he performed austerity? The going internal is austerity. That is the meaning of dhyan. But in order to meditate or dhyan, one has to be free from external consciousness. Our eyes see because consciousness is going out. Our ears hear, our skin touch, our tongue taste. So these are all external. Like senses are taking consciousness outside. So meditation means no more seeing with the eyes, no more hearing with the ears, no more touching with the skin, no more tasting with the tongue, no more smelling with the nose. 
all these consciousness is not going out anymore. Now our consciousness is constantly going out. So to meditate we have to stop the consciousness from going out but projecting it internally. When Brahma did that, Indriyesh, then what happened? When Brahma meditated, withdrawing his consciousness, then what happened? He created a force. Huh? He began to create a force. No. No. Lalita, then what happened? That also much afterwards. When he withdrew his, when he projected his consciousness internally, then what happened? Very good. He heard some sound. He projected his consciousness internally, so that sound was not from outside. That sound was inside. And that is Omkar. And when he meditated on this sound, then what happened? Aisharja? Then he heard the Gayatri. Brahma Gayatri. And when he meditated on the Brahma Gayatri, then the Vedic knowledge became revealed in his heart. So, how that has been described? The transcendental knowledge was revealed in the heart of Brahma by the mercy of the Lord. So, what is the process of understanding transcendental knowledge? Jagannath. Um, it's, revealed, it's revealed in the heart. Who reveals it? The Lord. Yes. But what is the process? Through, uh, turn, through turning inward. Turning inward. Through. When somebody surrenders unto Lord, then Lord or his representative reveals the knowledge in the heart. So does one surrender to the Lord first or surrender to someone else first? Who is representative? So, uh, it is revealed by the mercy of the Guru. Hmm. Dibbogyan ride prakashita. Don't you sing that? Hmm. Like uh, Shri Guru Charanapadma, uh, that song, Bandamui Sabadhanamati, Jaharu Prashadevai, E Bhavata Vyajai. We become, we cross over the ocean of material nature. Krishna Prapti Hai Jahahuite. One can receive Krishna. Shri Guru Karuna Shindhu Adhama Janar No. Mm. Uh, Guru Mukha Padma Vakya Chitte Te Kariya Oikho Arna Kariya Oshe Mone Asha Shri Guru Charani Roti Eishe Uttama Goti Je Prashade Pure Sarva Asha Chokhu Daan Dilo Jai Janme Janme Prabhu Shai Chokhu Daan He gives the eyes. What kind of eyes? Spiritual vision. Chakhu dan dilo jai janme janme prabhu shai dibbo gyan ride prakashito. By his mercy, the transcendental knowledge is revealed in the heart. So you see, do we understand now through common sense? Like, can we start, can we learn something? 
without the help of someone. Hmm. Did and did you learn the alphabet on your own? Did you learn A B C D on your own? Hmm. You needed to even to learn the alphabet. You needed the help of a teacher. So can somebody just buy some books on medicine and read them and can he claim that he has become a qualified doctor? So to be a medical man, one must study under another medical person who has the knowledge of that science. Books are there, but the books needs to be revealed. So that is the first revelation. What does the Guru do? Guru reveals the scriptures. Did you know Bhagavad Gita, the real purpose of Bhagavad Gita? Before we came across the purpose, Bhagavad Gita as it is. No. So <clears throat> this is the mercy of a Guru. The knowledge that is there in the books becomes revealed by his teachings. So that is how one can understand the Supreme Personality of God. The Bhagyan Ride Prakashita Tene Brahmarida Adi Kavai Muihanti Jatsuraya. And then he is describing. What is this material nature? Material nature is a combination of three elements. Earth, water, fire. Whatever we are seeing is a combination of these three things. Earth, water and fire. Tejo vari mridang jatha binamaya nirastu kuhakam But when you get to know the truth, then this Illusion, kuhakam, becomes revealed. Kuhakam becomes, kuhakam disappears. Just like when the sun comes up, can there be darkness? Like if ignorance is darkness and light is knowledge, then what is the source of light? Sun. So when sun comes up, is there any room for Darkness? No. Similarly, who is the source of all knowledge? Krishna. So when Krishna comes, Krishna is known, everything becomes known. Okay, so... <clears throat> okay, then quickly go to the next one. You all have your mobile phone, pocket vedas, yes. do you have, Tia, do you have pocket vedas? Yeah. yeah. So this uh, second verse is dharma prajhita koitava atra parama nirmat saranam satam vedam vastava matra vastu shivadam tapotrayanun mulanam Srimad Bhagavate Mahamuni Krite King Bhaparui Rishara Shaddo Rida Ridda Buruddha Teatra Krite Bhi Shushushu Bhi Stratkanat So Dharma Prajita Dharma means religious religiosity and Prajita means Rejected. Uh, and koitabo means real, the real meaning of the word koitabo is cheating. So, what is the cheating religion? The cheating religion is in the name of religion when one, wants, when one tries to enjoy this material nature. <coughs> is the purpose of religious activity to enjoy in this material nature. The purpose of dharma 
The purpose of religion is to understand Krishna. So when one gives up this tendency to enjoy this material nature or rejects all cheating religion, religion for the sake of enjoying the material nature, then he becomes completely non-envious. Then he gets to know the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And as a result of that, when one gets to know Krishna or when one surrenders unto Krishna, then what happens? Aisharja? When one surrenders unto Krishna, then tapotrayanun mulanam. The material nature is full of suffering. Uh, when one surrenders unto Krishna, then no more suffering. Taputrayan. Mm. Taputray means threefold miseries. What are the threefold miseries, Krishna Kishore? Meaning? <laughs> Misery is caused by other living entities. Misery is caused by natural disturbances. Misery is caused by one's own body. Okay. So, when one surrenders unto Krishna, one becomes free from these threefold miseries. And that knowledge has been given by Vasudev. So, such truth uproots the threefold miseries. This beautiful Bhagavatam compiled by the great sage Vasudev in his maturity is sufficient in itself for God realization. If we want to know God, then what's the way to go get to know Him? The way to get to know Him is through Srimad Bhagavatam. Hmm. Is sufficient in itself for this beautiful Bhagavatam is sufficient in itself for realizing the Supreme Personality of God. Then what's the need of other scriptures? Uh, when you got the most uh, perfect thing, is there any need for anything else? Hmm. Like somebody has some severe disease and that disease is causing him headache, Say somebody has ca cancer. So what is the when one gets the medicine for cancer, uh, then does he have to take Tylenol or paracetamol? Uh, one when one has the right medicine, does he have to take anything that just have simple side effects? I mean, takes care of simple side effects. Therefore, when one has the access to Srimad Bhagavatam, there is no need to. Uh, therefore, it's saying, what's the need of any other scriptures? What's the need of any other scripture? As soon as one attentively and submissively hears the message of Bhagavatam, by his culture of knowledge, the Supreme Lord is established within his heart. He's, the Lord is established in his heart. That means the Lord is there in his heart, isn't it? So when we study Srimad Bhagavatam, then we get to see how the Lord is in our heart. We don't have to search for Krishna outside. We have to search for him within ourselves. Krishna is in Vrindavan and a devotee's heart is Vrindavan. <laughs> Therefore, a devotee doesn't have to go to Vrindavan. Wherever he is, that is Vrindavan. His 
you know, because he sees the Supreme Personality of Godhead uh, within his heart. Thank you. Any question? In this verse it says that in order to understand Srimad Bhagavatam, it has to be like Nirmal sir. And or it's not that when one becomes non-envious, then he understands. And we also hear that by hearing Shri Bhagavatam regularly, one's offenses are one's anartha is there. So which comes first? Once we get pure, and then huh? what comes first? When we become free from offenses, then we read, or we read then. What came first, the chicken or the egg? <laughs> <laughs> first we have to hear first we have to hear because by hearing the comes the surrender but then again in order to hear we have to surrender right properly to properly hear we have to surrender and by hearing we surrender so submissive hearing. So here it is, submissive first hearing then. But then again, without hearing, how can you submit? What did you read? What did you do first? Surrender to Krishna or read Bhagavad Gita? But when you read Bhagavad Gita, in what kind of mood did you read Bhagavad Gita? Anyway, so the main thing is hearing. Shavanam is the first consideration. But Shavanam has to be submissive hearing. And when, uh, and when Brahma hears the word tapasya, it was uh, uh, from vision that came that word. Yeah. Yeah, he heard that uh, the Krishna from within his heart inspired him. Mm-hmm. Like, you see, it, okay, Krishna is saying that matta smritir gyanam apohanam cha. I give the memory. I give the intelligence. Right? So he heard the sound but the intelligence to understand that the sarun is to surrender to Krishna, hmm. that came from Krishna. 